Live and streaming from CBS News, New York, this is CBS 2 News at 9. The eclipse will be here before you know it. We're just hours away at this point. Millions are expected to be in the path of totality. You can see the track in which the eclipse is expected to be best seen. 31 million people are said to be in that path, some even flocking to New York for this historic event. Pack your patience along with snacks and water and make sure you have a full tank of gas. About 2,000 spectators are expected to gather on the lawn behind the museum for a viewing party this afternoon. Doors are opening at 1 p.m. and the event will run until the solar eclipse is over, which is about 4.30 in the afternoon. If we had these guys this afternoon, we'd be in great shape, but we have to bring in the chance for more clouds. Our odds, as it begins right at 210, you know, the odds for clouds may be 50 to 60 percent. CBS Morning's Tony DeCopel is at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where there is a massive viewing event being held. This is going to be most likely the largest single viewing location in the country. Upwards of 50,000 people arriving. They'll be looking skyward, hoping to get a view of the eclipse, but like much of the country, we are worried that these glasses won't be worth anything because we're going to be looking at clouds, clouds, clouds. Good morning on this Monday, April 8th. Welcome to CBS 2 News at 9 a.m. I'm Cindy Shu. We have a lot to talk about this morning, including team coverage on today's solar eclipse. Elijah Westbrook live on the west side with details on events here in the city. Lonnie Quinn in Lake Placid, where some of the best vantage points will be. And meteorologist John Elliott will let us know if clear skies are on the horizon for peak viewing. We're going to also have opera singer Rachel Willis Sorensen here in studio for a special performance ahead of her show at Carnegie. Hall. Plus, streaming in our next half hour, the Hip Hop Museum is using AI to help budding songwriters get their creativity flowing. We'll show you how it works. First, though, as promised, here's meteorologist John Elliott with the first alert forecast. And John, looks like the week is going to start without some great, with some great weather. It's already started great because you're back. Welcome <laughs> Aww, back, Cindy. Did you, you have a good trip? I had a wonderful trip. Family. It was nice to be with family. Yes. I love that. All right, so Cindy, you're going to love this. Walter Rella, the TV fella, our buddy, our photojournalist, uh, he's with Lonnie. So this is the shot, the live shot right now from Lake Placid. Wow, are they in great shape. We have a few more clouds here, but this is what Cindy Cindy's talking about today, terrific. Tuesday, even better. And then wah, wah, Wednesday turns cooler and wet. But just for fun, 65 today feels like the 24th of April. And then June is busting out all over. Pick of the week Tuesday, 75 degrees. That looks amazing. How does it look for eclipse viewing? Everyone's wondering. Okay, so let's talk about it. Okay. If we had now, if we had the conditions that we have now at two to four this afternoon, we'd be in great shape. But uh oh, we see some clouds filling in. So this is going to be a problem. So it was just interesting. Christine Johnson was just talking to the mayor of Buffalo. And again, typical pattern. There's something called diurnal dynamics, like what will happen during the course of a day. We could get, you know, a little bit of shear to blow away the gray, but we're definitely uh, in better shape than they are. As it begins at 210 through a termination at 430, you go from a 50% chance of cloud cover, not rain, cloud cover, like, like this, like there like that to a 60% chance. And remember, at 2 o'clock it starts, so you've got quite a bit of time. And then our maximum you know, eclipse is right around 325 at 90%. Please keep those glasses on the whole time, and then it will be out of there. So you have till uh, later in the afternoon to enjoy it. It's right now, Cindy, a 50-50 chance. All right, we love animals, so we want to know how this is going to affect the animals. Crazy stuff. I was doing some research mm -hmm. on this because everybody's worried about their dogs. Yeah. Well, if you are worried about your dogs, keep your dog inside. If your uh, dog has a tendency to follow your gaze, a lot of the shepherds and some of the smarter ones, if you look one way, they want to look that way because they are curious, they need to stay inside. Now, a recent study shows that um, uh, there's four different types of reaction to eclipses for, or eclipsy, for animals. Either no significant change, they go into evening routine, birds and bees tend to tend to do that. Bees will stop buzzing. It's less like it's night. And it's so weird. Some display anxiety. This is a concern for some of the zoos. I know some giraffes don't like 
don't like eclipses. And then some have novel reactions, like crazy stuff. So 75% are one, two, or three. So if you're concerned about your pet, I think the best thing is to just keep it inside. All right, good advice, John, thank you. And now to the Empire State Eclipse. This afternoon's solar eclipse is being marked with special events here in the city and across New York State. We're gonna begin with coverage with CBS News Elijah Westbrook at the Intrepid Museum on the west side. Good morning, Elijah. Hey, good morning, Cindy. Can you believe it? The day is here. We are just a few hours away from experiencing the solar eclipse. And right here in New York City, although we're not in the path of complete totality, experts say you can certainly count on a spectacular sight. The day has come. Millions of people are expected to see Monday's solar eclipse. It's a, such an amazing opportunity to be able to like get to teach people and also even experience it like even get to experience the solar eclipse like ourselves. Students at a comprehensive model school project in the Bronx have spent the last few days learning about what happens during an eclipse from Texas to Maine. 15 states across the country will experience totality with 31 million people in its path. This huge influx of visitors, especially in some of the remote parts of our state, Truly, you need to expect extended traffic delays. So pack your patience along with snacks and water and make sure you have a full tank of gas. The governor and other officials say you can watch this rare happening from almost anywhere in NYC. Transit agencies like the MTA are encouraging people ride public transportation over driving to view the eclipse. The New York and New Jersey DOT sharing the following tips. Do not park on the highway or roadway shoulders. Drivers should be prepared to turn on headlights if needed. And keep in mind, traffic is expected to surge, so be mindful mindful that it's best to stay on top of the latest information. Doctors are suggesting you wear special glasses to protect your eyes. Some lucky New Yorkers picked up free ones over the weekend at the Moynihan train hall where long lines formed. But others weren't so lucky after they were gone in about 20 minutes. This is a very exciting moment for the city. Uh, it feels like a communal experience that we're all sharing. We're excited. Okay. I love New York. All right, and right now you are getting a live look at the Intrepid, uh, one of several places here in New York City you can go and check out the solar eclipse. And for a list of more locations you can go, you can head to our website, cbsnewyork.com, and be sure to not forget these. You need these specialized solar eclipse glasses. That's the latest here from Manhattan's west side. I'm Elijah Westbrook. Cindy, let's send it back to you. Elijah, <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you so much. And let's head over to Lake Placid, New York, which is known for its winter Olympics training facility and that's where CBS 2's Lonnie Quinn will have a prime spot for this afternoon's eclipse. Hello, my friend. How you doing? Oh, my friend Cinderella. I got time doing great. This is a spectacular place for me to land. I was supposed to be in Rochester, Cindy, but look, the weather forecast wasn't looking great. We made a late, last-minute decision and headed out yesterday made our decision to come to Lake Placid, and we couldn't be more thrilled. First of all, it's a cool place to just watch this happen, and up until right now, the weather has been, okay, no, including right now, look at this view. Look at the sky. There's a little wispy cloud out there, but that's, that's it. This is all blue. It is just blue overhead. This is what skiers refer to as a bluebird day. I mean, it is spectacular. Where we are right now, all right, we are at the ski jumping venue here at Lake Placid, so where they gave out the gold, silver, and the bronze medals back in 1980. But I want to bring in somebody who knows more about this facility uh, than anybody else. So, Rebecca Dayton, come on over here. I'm making friends all over the place, Cindy. So this is Rebecca. That's Cindy right there. You can say hi to Cindy. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Yeah, no, she loves you, Cindy. All right, so here's the deal. Okay. Here we are, and, and I'm looking here, and first of all, these things are enormous. And you had a little stat on that, that they're the, the tallest, what, how does it work? They're the tallest man-made structure between Albany and Montreal. And so they're allowed to be here for the 1980 Olympic Games. And so they're kind of an anomaly in the Adirondack Park. So that's like, like you know... It's not as high as the Empire State Building. No, but in the Adirondacks, it's really tall. So it's 26 <laughs> stories to the glass-enclosed viewing elevator. You know, it's there. funny because I made my ride here from yeah. New York City. I didn't see a lot of skyscrapers as I was driving into the Adirondacks. Yes, exactly. Now, what if I'm a young kid and I want to be a ski jumper, but I don't live in Lake Placid? It seems like I'd be, like, out of luck. 
Well, actually, if you live in the east, you're in one of the luckiest regions because New England has a whole variety of small jumps really? from Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, all across those states. In New Hampshire, you can actually be a high school ski jumper as a high school competitive sport. Really? So, hey, you, have you ever tried it? No. <laughs> but my, my nephew has tried it. My nephew is a ski jumper, and we have a lot of little kids that try it. You looked at me like I was like, like half yeah, crazy. Hey, no. listen, Rebecca, thank you You're very welcome. much for that. Guys, I just want to let you know, this is all about the total solar eclipse. So we're going to get to 325 this afternoon. The sky is going to go from daytime to nighttime for a brief moment. Cars will have to turn their headlights on. Stars will appear around the outer edges of the corona. I mean, I've been looking forward to getting into totality my whole life. This is my chance. Right now, the weather's great. I do see clouds approaching, but we've got about, what, seven hours to go. I'm hoping we can hold out if I miss this one. The next one is in 55 years in 2079 in New York City. But, Cindy, get this. The next one in 2079, 2079 is going to be, it's going to go into totality during sunrise. That's how the sun will be rising mm -hmm. that day in 2079, but it'll be rising in totality. So you're not going to get that big dramatic change from bright sunlight to darkness, but that's the next one coming up again 55 years from now. But we're alive right here in a really cool spot. And Sin, if you're here, these things are just, they're gigantic. I can't tell you. I mean, I, I can't imagine getting up there. And <laughs> although, you know what? We're, we are going to the top, right? Get this just quickly before we go. You know how they get to the top, Cindy? They have their uh, own private little gondolas that get them up there. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Lonnie, thank you right, so guys, much. I love your excitement. Bye. <laughs>